So the date is the 5th of September 2016. And within the next couple of minutes, I am going to hit a million subscribers. What? <laughs> oh, what? oh my god, what the fuck? This is intense. Jesus. Fucking no way. <laughs> my life was not always this good. Let's go back to where this all started. Alright, so we're on our way to Luton, um, and I'm going to show you where I got my first house. Not obviously the one that I owned, <laughs> but where I was born, where I spent the first few months of my life. And I'm going to show you guys the sort of area that I was brought up in, I guess. So th this is the house that I was born in. And um, spent like the first few months of my life here. Uh, this is the, the only house that my parents were both living together. Um, so I don't really remember it that well. It's, it's, it's strange because even going in there, I recognise bits that I must have only been f a few months old. Like it's strange. But this this is the house in Luton that we lived in. It's, it's not too bad. As long as I can remember, all my memories of my dad, everything like that, he was very, very abusive towards me and my mum. L later on in my life, he basically disowned me. He abused me physically, mentally, psychologically. He, he really did mess me up and I'm happy my mum left when she did. So I decided that I'd park outside the house that my dad died in. <laughs> so for everyone that doesn't know this, my dad was a heroin addict and I need to be forwards, <laughs> that's a thing. Yeah, for everyone that doesn't know, my uh, dad was a heroin addict and he overdosed in March this year which is obviously pretty shit, but at the same time, nothing I could have done about it. It was only him that could have helped himself, and obviously he didn't do that. But yeah, the house outside looks nicer than it did inside. This is basically how shit this is. Oh, right. Better stop recording. My dad wasn't exactly a nice person when he was alive and I guess half of that might have been the drugs. I don't know, I'm not a psychologist, but all I know is he was abusive towards me and my mum. I, I, I still love the man. As bad as he was, he was still my dad. So after um, Luton, me and my mum had to run away from my dad because he was a bit of a cunt. <laughs> And uh, we ran away to this, this house here. The one with the pale green door. My first memories ever were, were inside this house. Like, me and my mum had nothing when we first came here. We, we had nothing. Like, my mum had to beg to get furniture. We, we had to have the, what are they called? The Good Samaritan, what are they called? This Sa Salvation Army. <laughs> we had to have the Salvation Army come round. I remember them giving me, like, little puzzles, like, I remember them giving us like baked beans and uh, mini sausages in a can and that's pretty much what we lived off, just about us baked beans and sausages. I remember like, <laughs> like it's strange to see this place, like the slugs in the toilet. <laughs> we literally had nothing, we had no money and, and we were happy and I, I, I just, it, it's strange seeing this place and seeing how much has changed over the last what, 16 years of my life. Well, this, this was the back garden. I remember it um, being a field. <laughs> I remember it being a field. I don't remember it being, not small, but I don't remember it being a garden. So me and my mum lived in this house up until I was about three years old. And 
my mum went to this church thing one day, like just just some sort of gathering, and she met my stepdad, and it was the first time that me and my mum had ever been to church, and um, yeah, she met my stepdad and fell in love. How cute! <laughs> I went from being a single child to having you know, a stepdad, four other brothers and sisters and my mum, all in one house. And like when we moved to this new house we went from eating beans and sausages in a can to having proper meals. Like, I remember the first time I ever tasted sugar, you know, was in that house. We couldn't afford sweets, we couldn't afford chips. And um, I remember, you know, my first proper birthday cake. I remember my first, you know, proper big meal. These were big things in my life. You know, my first cup of squash. It was it was a nice place. It was a nice change. Fast forward a couple of years, my mum had had another kid with my stepdad, and was pregnant with my little sister at the time. And we didn't have enough money to keep on living in that house uh, because obviously there are more people in the family we had to up and move so there's this little bit that uh, all successful youtubers and over a million subs have nice cars fuck off do we look at that piece of shit <laughs> so this is where i grew up this is where i spent most of my upbringing i guess and it's, it's not the worst place in the world it's quite nice actually but it, it was quite rough like I don't want to say anything too loud, but our next door, one of our next door neighbours was a cocaine dealer. Sorry about the birds. Yeah, this place was, um, it was what it was. It did what he needs to do. And I guess it's just where we grew up. We used to just play out here, play football against that little hedge there. So this little house here as well that we used to live in, there were nine of us living there. It's my mum, my stepdad's, stepdad's four children, me, and my little brother and sister that my mum and my stepdad had together. So there were nine of us living in one of those tiny houses. It was hectic. Just imagine fucking just, just sitting there. There's no space. You never got any space in that house. And I, I don't understand how we did it. I just don't. So I actually lived in this house from the age of six up until I was 16 years old. Um, and in that time I had... But everything that happens in that time happened in that house. So it's, it's a massive part, a massive, massive part of my life. I went through primary schools, secondary schools, more of my dad's shit. <laughs> in that house. And as you guys know, at the age of 11 years old, you go to high school or secondary school. And this is where my life got even more difficult. So this is hell. <laughs> Welcome to hell. Uh, so this is the school that I spent from year seven to the end of year nine in and it was literally the worst three years of my life like not only did i get bullied very bad by the students but i also got bullied by the teachers you know i had teachers say don't be like mike he's not going to get anywhere of his life don't be like him this was hell this was hell like just up the road here no like you can move over just up the road there with the women are walking running sorry I actually got kicked in the kidney and I was pissing blood for a few days I got taken to hospital had to stay there overnight and had a few weeks of school because I was in too much pain to do anything and that pretty much <laughs> sums sums this place up it wasn't the best school but it wasn't the worst so I left Knights Templar in, uh, at the end of year nine, hoping to get away from the bullying by the students and the teachers and start fresh. And 
uh, it just didn't happen. It just didn't. So this is the school that I went to um, after Knights Templar. I tried to go somewhere new, tried to escape all the bullying and shit. And uh, <laughs> you see the, the sign for there, the Da Vinci Studio School. Right, just it. And um, yeah, I tried, I tried to come to here to try and escape all of that shit. Try and start fresh with a, with a better school than I thought it would be. And uh, things just didn't get better. They got so much worse. Yeah, but my time here wasn't the best at all. Like, I, I got bullied a lot in this school and the people that actually went to the school, some of them now messaged me saying that they knew that I would be big on YouTube and all this shit. Quite frankly, you guys know who you are, you can all fuck yourselves. <laughs> Right, so I bet you guys are wondering why I'm just sitting outside the random Tesco's for no reason. Pretty simple, right? <laughs> when I was in the school that I just showed you, uh, I, was, I was in Tesco's with a girl. This, this is that Tesco's. And um, people that didn't like me within the school. Uh, I'm just going to call them. I'm not sure if I'm going to So yeah, um, people that just didn't like me within the school. Uh, Track me down to in Tesco's when I was with a girl, and 20 of them stood st st exactly where I'm standing now, waiting for me to come out. Well, one of them went in there and tried to beat the shit out of me, and he had the knife in him. I had to get escorted up by the police. They literally took me back to where I was living, and yeah. How old were you? How old was I? I, I, I was in year 10, so I was 15. How cruel. 15 years old, getting tracked down in Stevenage. Death threats and everything, it was raw. <laughs> Stevenage was the worst place I, I had ever been, and I still get anxious walking around Stevenage now. I absolutely hate it. Because of what happened and how literally I was scared for my life being in that school. I had to leave. I, I, I was there for three months and I had to leave. I literally had such bad anxiety. I, you know, I, I, I just didn't want to go anywhere. I didn't want to leave the house. I was so scared about, you know, the people there and it was horrific, it was so, so horrible. So I took a few months out of school um, to try and get my confidence back because I, I just, I, I wasn't me after that. So I took a few months out of school and, you know, home educated myself. And when I say home educating myself, I just basically played World of Warcraft for three months. In that period of time, I fell in love with YouTube. I, I fell in love with YouTubers. I started watching people like, um, like KSI, Road to Shore. Um, I brought FIFA because of them. I you know, started watching PewDiePie because he was starting to get big. I um, was watching Rhett and Link, you know, and all these big YouTubers I, I just started watching and um, I'd, I'd always been in love with acting my entire life and I saw how these people could just sit in their rooms and record a video and, you know, reach millions of people. And at that point, I knew that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to do YouTube. And I, I made my first ever YouTube video that never got uploaded. And after a few months have passed, you know, of me being at home and just, just getting away from life, I found a nice school. On my first day, I was so scared about going there in case I would get bullied again. And I was so scared about just, just being 
in this environment, but it, it was it was amazing. It was probably the best year of my life. This is the place that I ended up after like my little break away from schools. And it was literally just this little pink house in the middle of nowhere. And it was a strange, strange difference for me going from schools that were just full of drug dealers and fuck it. <laughs> What a big gangsters. This little school of posh twats, basically. <laughs> I, I didn't know how to interact with people like this, so it was, it was weird for me to come into this situation and try and act upper class when my entire life I was very much working class. This is the place that I'm like, I, I made my actual real group of like, friends now. So this is it's, it's strange to come back here as well because like this is where I made most of my real mates, you know, the people that have helped me through YouTube and helped me like follow my dreams. The people that I met here, like I've met so many amazing teachers and stuff here, and people that just inspired me. That it's it's, it's nice to come back here, like Mr. Longbottom. You know who you are. Big shout out. <laughs> so I left that school with four GCSEs. So I basically have no qualifications. <laughs> but I also left that school motivated to do what I wanted with my life. And I owe the people that I met there a lot. A few months after I left this school, I took a massive gamble. I quit my college course, I quit my job and I decided that I wanted to pursue YouTube and <laughs> if it failed, it failed but I wanted to put my all into it. I wanted to put my entire life, my every waking minute into making videos, into doing what I love and I'm so, so thankful that it's worked out. In the last year, I've gained over a million subscribers on YouTube, over 700,000 followers on, on Facebook, over 100,000 on Instagram, you know. I've done a lot in the last year, and no matter how shit my life was at some point, no matter how good it was at others, I'm happy with the way my life has gone because it's made me who I am today and without all of the stuff that happened, I would not be who I am. So that is the first 18 years of my life and I'm excited to bring you guys along to the next however many years I do this for. Each and every one of you has changed my life. Dramatically. I went from being that one kid in class that was picked on, that was never going to get anywhere with their life according to the teachers. And I've done this. And I've got an insane fan base and I owe you guys my life, pretty much. I'm not sure if I'd be here today without without you, without my friends, without my family. And that's the truth. As always guys, please stay safe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.